Atrium, taking healthcare to new levels with innovation in medical device technology. Our unmatched quality, constant innovation, and commitment to education and support have made us the number one manufacturer of chest drain products worldwide. Let's review the various options and setup techniques for conducting post-operative autotransfusion during chest drainage. Atrium pioneered today's continuous ATS techniques utilizing a water seal chest drainage system. Continuous autotransfusion is a fast and easy to use ATS method and offers many distinct advantages to you and your patients. First, a continuous reinfusion setup remains a closed system which helps reduce and minimize the risk of collected blood contamination. There can also be significantly less operator exposure to blood with a continuous ATS system. Many clinicians believe that reinfusing the patient's blood back on an hourly, continuous basis can contribute to improved patient stability following open heart surgery or mediastinal trauma. And a continuous reinfusion technique saves time, money, and waste by eliminating the need for additional ATS blood bags and microaggregate blood filters. For direct reinfusion of whole blood via a blood-compatible infusion pump, a microemboli blood filter and a non-vented blood-compatible IV set must be used. Setup for initiating continuous autotransfusion via infusion pump begins by clamping off the PVC access line located at the base of the ATS collection chamber. The PVC access line should be draped around the patient tube or metal hanger, as shown, and the spike port cap removed using aseptic handling technique. A microemboli blood filter is then inserted using a firm twisting motion. Next, a non-vented IV blood set is spiked directly into the microaggregate blood filter to complete the continuous ATS setup. To prepare the access line, blood filter, and IV set for priming, a three-way stopcock and 60cc syringe is attached to the distal end of the IV set. By releasing the access line clamp, blood can now be aspirated into the blood filter and IV set for final priming. It is important that the filter and drip chamber remain in an upside-down condition until the IV drip chamber is approximately one quarter full of blood. Then the blood filter and drip chamber can be positioned in the appropriate right-side-up condition and completely purged of all remaining air prior to attachment to the patient. Once the fully primed IV set is connected to the patient, the blood-compatible IV pump can then be programmed to the desired volume and rate to be infused. If your hospital uses a self-priming infusion pump, priming of the IV circuit is accomplished by inserting the IV cassette into the pump and setting the infusion pump to the priming mode. Be sure that the complete IV circuit is purged of all air prior to patient connection. Atrium's complete family of blood recovery and multipurpose ATS systems incorporate an advanced ATS sump port located at the base of the ATS chamber. This innovative sump port design allows the convenience of programming the infusion pump for the total blood volume collected in the ATS chamber. During autotransfusion, you may notice the blue water momentarily rise to the top of the water seal column. This is caused by a temporary increase in vacuum pressure from blood being evacuated from the closed drainage system. Atrium's controlled release float valve, which has been specifically designed to lower accumulating high vacuum pressure, will lower any increases in patient pressure down to a more desirable level automatically. However, any increase in negative pressure that is observed can also be easily removed manually by temporarily depressing the filtered manual vent located on top of the drain. Once reinfusion is completed or no longer required, the access line clamp should be closed firmly and the blood filter and IV set assembly should be removed from the access line. Always cap off the end of the access line when it is not in use and position it into the holder located on top of the drain. During episodes of extremely fast or heavy bleeding, use of multiple self-filling ATS bags will accommodate larger volumes of blood easier and more efficiently than a continuous infusion pump method. To accommodate rapid, heavy blood loss situations, Atrium developed the world's first self-filling ATS bag. 
This compact, easy to use ATS bag can be used with all of Atrium's blood recovery and multipurpose ATS chest drains. 2450 self-filling ATS bags should be readily available in your unit. In the event of an emergency blood loss situation, or anticipated heavy bleeding following surgery or trauma. This state-of-the-art 700 milliliter capacity blood bag incorporates a low vacuum generating spring assembly, which provides immediate transfer of patient drainage without the need for patient tube disconnection. To use the 2450 ATS bag, you begin by closing the chest drain access line clamp and the clamp on the ATS bag. Next, Remove the tethered spike port cap and insert the ATS bag spike directly into the drain's access line using a firm twisting motion. Once connected, open both the access line and ATS bag clamps. Next, hold the ATS bag two to four inches below the base of the drain and gently bend the ATS bag upward where indicated. This will activate the internal spring assembly and initiate blood transfer out of the drain. To maximize the ATS bag's capacity during blood transfer, gently squeeze the ATS bag, forcing all remaining blood bag air volume into the chest drain collection chamber and release. Repeat as necessary until all air is displaced and the ATS bag is full. In similar fashion to continuous reinfusion with an IV pump, the controlled release action of Atrium's water seal float valve will automatically release any accumulating vacuum pressure that is generated during blood removal within 10 to 12 seconds of initial bag activation. Atrium's advanced water seal float valve design has been carefully engineered to accommodate rapid, gentle blood evacuation from the ATS collection chamber without prolonged negative pressure to the patient. Once blood transfer into the ATS bag is complete, both clamps are closed and the ATS bag spike is disconnected from the chest drain. The ATS bag spike is then reinserted back into its holder as shown. Recap the chest drain access line spike port using aseptic technique and position it out of the way in the holder when it is no longer required. The 2450 ATS bag is now ready for reinfusion setup. Another method for conducting postoperative auto transfusion with a chest drain is with an Atrium 2550 inline ATS bag. With this collection method, all patient drainage is collected in an internally stented ATS bag prior to entering the drain. Atrium's 2550 inline ATS bag is an extremely flexible, compact ATS collection device that can be used with any Atrium chest drain equipped with an inline patient tube connector. Atrium's locking auto-connect tubing connectors provide rapid conversion from collection mode to reinfusion mode in seconds. The flexible hanger design provides fast and convenient bag attachment onto an adjacent bed rail or directly onto the front face of the drain. To connect the inline ATS bag to the chest drain, begin by moving the patient tube clamp next to the inline connector. Next, firmly close both ATS bag clamps and the patient tube clamp. After removing the protective cap from the female ATS bag connector, separate the patient tube connector by depressing the connector lock. Once separated, insert the male patient tube connector directly into the female ATS bag connector. The male ATS bag connector should then be inserted directly into the chest drain connector as shown. The inline ATS bag is now connected and ready for clamp release. Open both inline ATS bag clamps first. Then immediately open the patient tube clamp to resume patient drainage. It is very important to check that the patient tube clamp remains open at all times, except during ATS bag replacement or removal. It is also important to routinely check the patient tube and ATS bag positioning, as they should remain free of dependent loops to ensure maximum drainage efficiency. When reading and recording blood collection volume, you will notice Atrium's internally stented ATS bag is calibrated on one side under vacuum pressure and the opposite side under a non-vacuum condition. Atrium's 2550 ATS bag features bold, easy-to-read fluid level calibrations in 25 milliliter increments, up to a maximum collection capacity of 600 milliliters. To remove or replace the inline ATS bag, 
securely close the patient tube clamp and both ATS bag clamps. After securing all clamps closed, disconnect the chest drain ATS bag connector. Next, disconnect the patient tube from the ATS bag and insert the patient tube connector into the chest drain connector. Once the patient is reconnected to the drain, you should immediately open the patient clamp to re-establish drainage. This is followed by reconnecting the ATS bag connectors to each other. The 2550 inline ATS bag is now ready to be handled for reinfusion setup. For direct reinfusion of whole blood from either a 2450 self-filling ATS bag or 2550 inline ATS bag, a microemboli blood filter and IV blood set must be used. First, pre-prime the IV blood administration set and blood filter with sterile saline. After chest drain disconnection, remove the tethered cap using good sterile technique and insert the pre-primed filter spike into the ATS bag spike port using a firm twisting motion. Next, open the filtered air vent located on top of the ATS bag first, then open the IV clamp to complete priming. After evacuating all remaining air within the IV circuit, close the IV clamp. The IV is now ready for patient connection. Due to the internal stent design of the ATS bag, we do not recommend priming the IV circuit by forcing blood through the filter and IV set by squeezing the ATS bag. For patient reinfusion, attach the distal end of the fully primed IV set to the patient and open the IV line clamp to begin infusion. In the event that blood reinfusion does not appear to be flowing freely to the patient, be sure that the filtered air vent located on top of the ATS bag and all IV clamps are open to maximize flow to the patient. It is also important to periodically check the ATS bag during patient reinfusion for any signs of intra-ATS bag clotting by gently tipping the ATS bag to one side. For patient reinfusion via a pressure infuser, a larger size pressure infuser is recommended. When using a pressure infuser, the filtered air vent located on top of the ATS bag must remain closed and it is important not to reinfuse the entire blood contents completely through the blood and IV set as air emboli can result. Under certain conditions, shed mediastinal blood has been reported to be sufficiently defibrinated from prolonged exposure to tissue within the mediastinal cavity helping to reduce clotting during ATS collection. Under normal bleeding conditions where shed blood has been sufficiently defibrinated, as a general rule, anticoagulation is not required. However, when rapid or massive blood loss can be expected, an effective dose of citrate anticoagulant is recommended to help minimize clotting within the chest drain during such blood loss conditions. When required, citrate ACDA or CPD solutions should be added directly to the ATS collection system during setup or simultaneous to blood collection. Anticoagulant therapy and dosage recommendations are at the discretion of a physician and should be monitored carefully during and after patient reinfusion. Please refer to the accompanying ATS handbook and corresponding product insert for further information regarding setup and use autotransfusion precautions, and troubleshooting. It is important that all hospital protocols for blood handling, anticoagulant administration, autologous whole blood autotransfusion, disposal handling, and infection control be carefully followed. It is our hope that review of this educational video has helped enhance your working knowledge of chest drainage autotransfusion and further familiarized you with Atrium's easy-to-use operating system. For customer service, technical product information, or to request additional in-service educational material, we invite you to call Atrium anytime at 1-800-5-ATRIUM. From all of us at Atrium, thank you for the opportunity to present this important educational service.